Okay, thank you. I, I will be presenting today uh, on behalf of the of the quarters. So maybe just before I, while I figure out how to share my screen, I can ask you a question. Um, have any of you guys uh, uh, heard of pair principles? Um, so maybe you can raise your hand or something to... Okay, so one, two, okay, and then it's of course, okay, okay, so you heard of, of them, it's not, um, uh, let's see, okay, so that's good, so this is going to be my presentation. Uh, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to talk about applying pair principles uh, to open hardware. So let's, um, can you see my screen? Okay, yep. great, thank you. Um, yeah, so pair principles, third pair principles for open hardware. Uh, and uh, just to, to, to say, to begin with, uh, this is a joint effort between Nadica Milkovic, uh, Limerkir, and myself. And I encourage you to check out our paper uh, on archive, where you can find all the details and use cases that um, uh, about this work. So uh, first, uh, why, why open science? So why openness? So, of course, um, open science emerged to provide accessible publications, data, software, methods, physical samples uh, to the general public. So it inspires, inspires trustworthiness in science uh, because it also it enables research verification, transparency and reuse. Uh, it also has a major social role because uh, it uh, it reduces social inequality by enable anyone to access scientific knowledge. So anyone with the access to the internet. All right. So the next thing, uh, why open source uh, or what is open source hardware? So this is the definition that we use. So it is a physical artifact, either electrical or mechanical, whose design information is available to all usable by the public in a way that allows anyone to make, modify, distribute, and use it. So, uh, of course, it represents a set of design and legal principles uh, that can refer to a wide range of objects such as computers, uh, well, um, scientific instruments, so we've seen about this like uh, microscopes, uh, 3D printed furniture, uh, physical constructions, robots, and so on. So we also see um, now more recently that open source hardware has been recognized in, uh, in, in publications, so in published work. So we will see researchers who want to publish papers and upon a publication, they will be asked to share their data, code and, and hardware oftentimes. And they will share this uh, information, this uh, materials in uh, data repositories. So we can see uh, that uh, both data and um, or data, software, and hardware are uh, integral parts of the modern scientific process, and that these artifacts are also um, recognized as uh, more and more as um, scientific outputs. But when we talk about open source hardware and sharing of the open source hardware, we first need to, to pause and kind of like define its structure. So here um, we see uh, open source hardware here on the right hand side. So this is Arduino Mega 2560 microcontroller board. Uh, and it is based, uh, it is, uh, it, its design is completely open and can be recreated uh, anywhere in the world. So what does that mean? How we can describe this design in a digital format, digital format? So of course, we need to have uh, its um, 
its design. So its design needs to be open. So uh, this is a schematics of the of the design. We also need to understand what materials to use. So we need bills of materials, printed circuit uh, boards, uh, PCBs, and other. Um, and um, all right. And then in order to kind of like put this uh, thing to use, we also need we, we need software. So we need uh, firmware, drivers, interface APIs, simulation, analysis code, and so on. And finally, to make sense of this all, we need a good uh, documentation. So we need open documentation. So here, uh, what I'm trying to say, so in conclusion, in order to have open hardware, we need to have open physical design, we need to have open software, uh, and we need to have open and available documentation to uh, put to to make sense of of these uh, components. Um, so now, yeah, now when we understand uh, how the the structure of open hardware, we can uh, see what are kind of like the challenges in in sharing and reusing it. So um, uh, challenges of. Uh, uh, of sharing open source hardware. So this is this, these are the challenges that we identified. So the first one is applying licenses. So licensing for open source design, software, data, and documentation. These are different components. And each of, each of them would require uh, a specific uh, license. And in particular, the complexity arises uh, when some of the components like uh, schematics with a graphical circuit uh, can fall between analog design and software categories. So then it is not clear which license we should apply. Should we apply a data license or should we apply a software license? So this is something definitely uh, to discuss. Another complexity when it comes to licensing is when one open, so open source hardware is uh, a part of another open source hardware. So for example, uh, we see that in um, Arduino Uno unit, that can be a part of another uh, open source hardware and then uh, licensing of this product uh, can be uh, quite complex. So the next challenge that we, uh, that we identify is, um, is a dissemination channel. The next challenge, yeah, um, is a dissemination challenge a channel for open source hardware. So these are, for example, uh, OSHA or uh, software repositories or data repositories. However, there is currently no native support in software or data repositories. So, for instance, um, for instance, uh, a software repository such as GitHub does not support uh, licensing for open source hardware or and also data repositories don't, don't have support uh, for open source hardware. Uh, then <clears throat> we see uh, challenges in organizing, separating and interlinking re resources. So um, same license is often applied to all of these like diverse uh, resources, products. And finally, um, there is a challenge in metadata and documentation. So there is currently, uh, to our knowledge, when writing no metadata standards or no widely used metadata standards for open source hardware. And also, um, um, yeah. So this is definitely going to be maybe a discussion a little bit later on. So, and of course, structured metadata is essential uh, for for overall product documentation, and uh, especially machine uh, actionable metadata, which is uh, integral for fair principles. So uh, fair principles. So what are fair principles? I'm very happy to see that most of you have heard uh, of fair principles. So these are a set of guidelines to make research digital artifacts findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable by machines and by people. So they're created initially for research data, but have since been adopted uh, for the dissemination of research software. And now um, we have uh, proposed that for also open source hardware. <clears throat> 
So these uh, uh, fair principles in their original format have been widely cited indoors and adopted by a broad range of uh, stakeholders, repositories, and so on. So here is a quick summary of fair principles. So findable, that means that we uh, are able to describe data in metadata, assign a DOI or a unique identifier, and uh, have this recording, metadata recording, in a shared um, data repository or registry. So um, a digital artifact is accessible um, if uh, it can be accessed with standard protocols. But accessible does not necessarily mean open. So, um, so I think that that is important to, to emphasize when it comes to fair principles. Then interoperable, um, a, piece, uh, a data set or a digital artifact is interoperable if file formats are uh, well known, so open or proprietary, and if um, there is a description of each data uh, element so that we can understand how they can uh, be uh, used in different applications. And finally, reusable. So uh, reusable primarily means that uh, license and, uh, and that the correct license is applied and that a uh, reuser has uh, right usage rights and that we understand also uh, how that artifact has emerged so that we have access to data provenance. All right, so how, so this is a kind of like a summary of the of fair principles that are created for primarily scientific data. So they're created for scientific data management and stewardship. So how we can apply these principles to open source hardware. So here we propose uh, the following principles and um, it is important to say that uh, uh, they are inspired by fair principles for data and, uh, and software. All right, so findable open source hardware means that hardware is described with rich metadata. It means that it is registered or indexed in a searchable resource through OSHA or a registry or a repository, and that it is assigned a globally unique and persistent identifier through OSHLA or a trusted repository, such that each hardware component has a unique identifier. So metadata and uh, these open, open source hardware products should be easy to find for both humans and computers. And of course, machine-readable metadata is essential for this automatic discovery of, of uh, of products and uh, they would be uh, indexed and uh, and search engine crawlers can access to them. Next, accessible. Uh, so accessible open source hardware means that hardware is open and retrievable by its identifier using a standard communications protocol. So the protocol uh, is open, free and universally implementable and to allow for an authentication and authorization procedure where necessary. And so all open source hardware files should be stored together on a repository infrastructure uh, to allow for their um, reuse. So metadata is accessible even when the hardware is no longer available. So just to say what is underlined is our proposed change, change whereas uh, the main text that is not underlined is uh, kind of um, inspired from the original um, fair principles. So essentially here, once a user finds uh, their uh, required open source hardware design, they need to know how they can access this design. So even if that includes uh, authentication and authorization, uh, this design should be retrievable and accessible through the internet. Uh, next, um, interoperable open source hardware means that the hardware uses a formal, accessible, shared, and broadly applicable language for knowledge representation used both in academia and industry. And from the previous presentation, we, we've seen how important that is 
So kind of like what we do in research should be uh, in, in, in research space should be the same as how things are actually produced um, in, in, in the industry and practice. So then um, hardware uh, should use vocabularies that follow fair principles, and it should include cross-references to its software data documentation and qualified references to other objects. Uh, again, maybe external software data or documentation. Uh, so, so we've seen an example, I mentioned an example where one open source hardware is a part of another. So they can be, they can be integrated uh, with each other. So in that case, uh, uh, each design needs to be, needs to interoperate with different applications um, or uh, software. So we need to have information. We need to know how to do that correctly. Finally, reusable open source hardware uh, means that hardware is richly described with a plurality of accurate and relevant attributes that reflect its complex structure with clear and accessible usage licenses to be applied on each of the components, detailed provenance on all components, so bills of material, assembly instructions, and other, while meeting community standards. So hardware includes uh, qualified references to other hardware and available components. So it is important to say here that the ultimate goal of FAIR is to optimize the reuse of research artifacts, um, or in this case, open source hardware. So to achieve this, uh, we have metadata and also uh, data, so open source hardware designs that should be well described so that they can be replicated and combined in different settings. Um, and uh, when it comes to reusability, we really need to know the licenses and we really need to assign the licenses because even if a resource is available online, it does not mean it is reusable. So a license is really critical to allow this uh, reuse. All right, um, so uh, just uh, in the conclusion, so we propose leveraging fair principles for the dissemination of open source hardware. Um, we, we, we see that discipline specific and community standards are still underdeveloped. So there is definitely uh, interesting topics uh, to do there as a, of research there. So fair for open source hardware would facilitate its recognition as a complete scientific output and also give attribution to people who work on that. And we can expect limitations regarding its openness, working functionality and computational reproducibility, as for example, some things can be still proprietary and not fully open. Uh, and, and, and it is expected that some small changes will maybe hinder computational reproducibility. However, this would be a huge step forward and uh, it can potentially, uh, and the problems can be put and overcome with new research and new developments. All right, uh, so thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to, to take uh, any questions. Yes, claps. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, I am keeping stack again as well. If people do have questions, go ahead and raise your hand on the camera or use the feature and I will definitely see it. I see one from, from Mike. Yeah, thank you. This is a, a very nice piece of, of work and very relevant to what I'm planning to do. So thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, I'm just I'm curious uh, in terms of your description of, of trying to get unique identifiers for everything and so on. How um, how much um, have you explored what the existing tools are able to do and how much have you identified gaps where there needs to be new development in terms of metadata standards? Or is it a bit early for that? No, this is an excellent question. Um, so I think um, when it comes to, for example, data repositories, um, we typically mint DOIs, uh, 
and they are excellent because they are agnostic really to what the resource is. Uh, so, for example, they can be minted for for software, for data, for presentations, for work posts, for really anything. So they're completely agnostic. So they can be applied to to anything. And I think that open source hardware would be an excellent uh, uh, thing to apply them also uh, on. Um, but uh, then the thing is, when it comes to metadata, um, we so there is yeah, a metadata is like a class, and um, and each resource has its own type, its own type. So, for example, typically in Dataverse, because it is created as a universe of data, right? All of the types, uh, all of the deposit types, will be a data set. So essentially, if people yeah, deposit something, uh, whether it is like a video format, audio, or observational data, anything like that, anything essentially will be seen as a data set. So what I think would be really necessary is that we have a, a, a prop, uh, is it uh, like a type of this uh, resource and that it should be open source hardware. And I think that that type would be a composite type actually. Mm. So to reflect this like complex structure, right? So we see that we will need some uh, physical uh, design component. So um, a design component, a software component, a documentation. So then the metadata should really reflect uh, this uh, composite uh, design of open, open hardware. And another thing that I thought of here is that uh, uh, there are already standards for software. And these are, for example, code meta. So instead of maybe creating something from scratch, I think that um, a standard for a metadata standard for, for hardware uh, uh, would um, can incorporate something like code meta uh, or a data standard. Yeah, kind of like the composite of things that we already have rather than uh, kicking off from scratch. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's very helpful. And yeah, I very much agree. Um, one of the things I've found just in my own work is that I've built a I uh, found it necessary to build quite big spreadsheets saying, OK, this instrument consists of, you know, this board at this version and this board, other board at this version and this other board and this firmware and this documentation, which describes how that works. And all of that package together is the release of that instrument for that particular experiment. And, yeah, it would be really great to have uh, tools other than Excel <laughs> to uh, keep, <laughs> keep, keep track of all of that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I did see a hand from Barbara as well. Um, so we'll go ahead with Barbara's question. And I do want to just take a couple minutes to do some community updates. And then after that, we can continue our talks. But first, Barbara, with your question. Um, I don't know if I'm back online. Um, well, actually, more than a question, it was more an invitation um, because so uh, clearly, we need to do better communication around the meta data standard that the IoT Alliance uh, has developed, and that's why I'm here. Um, and part of that is the work that we're going to be doing on, I believe you were, you're talking about interoperability and interactivity, or at least that's the, that's the words that we use in terms of interaction of the data standards, for example, between the different platforms where they've been set up. Uh, so where all the different platforms on which the designs are accessible and how that becomes interoperable. Um, and as we set up these working groups, I think it would be very relevant for uh, some of your research to be pre presented as a, a sort of like common ground to start the work moving forward. I also think that it's really interesting that both of our, um, I would say, approaches, research-based and standards development uh, approach, um, are all funded by the Sloan Foundation. It says a lot about their uh, their sort of cross-cutting uh, vision and how they uh, how they're supporting open hardware. Um, um, to be honest, this is a little bit of a kind of uh, a, an extra project for me. Uh, it just like emerged, kind of like interacting with uh, uh, Nadita and also Limor has the, she she leads the group on fair principles yeah. uh, at uh, Research Data Alliance. So we so somehow like yeah, this is kind of like additional project. My my uh, so I am funded by Sloan. And that is uh, for my work on actually computational reproducibility. Oh, okay. So it's uh, yeah, 
this is kind of like additional uh, interesting topic. Sorry. But I was I, one one thought I have was that um, what you're presenting is sort of the intersection of all of the elements around an open hardware, um, and I wanted to put out there that one of the sort of modus operandi or missions of the Internet of Production Alliance is to be very careful that we're working on the enabling. Uh, data standards than enable digital infrastructure, but in what you were describing as so to support find findability, and then you were talking about accessibility and where the the, the designs are, and talking about like a, an overall repository. Uh, our focus with a standard has been for there to be a manifest that can then be found no matter where it is, um, and I was wondering what your thoughts were on that in terms of. Uh, like advocating for hosting of designs versus findability of designs? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So I, um, so I work with a Dataverse a data repository. And um, so the thing is, when we talk about, uh, about data sharing, about design sharing, so Dataverse has this commitment for the long term. Uh, you know, for the long-term preservation, for data sharing, for accessibility, it also implements uh, many of these uh, fair principles. So the thing is that um, what I'm trying to say here is that there are already uh, community standards in how these things are implemented and how they are, uh, yeah, how they are implemented and how they are envisioned. So first thing that I would say is that uh, maybe new communities don't need to kind of like reinvent the wheel, uh, trying to create own, you know, fair principles when there is already quite a bit of work that existed there. And then second thing is when it comes to sharing, I think that uh, it is maybe also better to to be inspired by these uh, um, established repositories and uh, and kind of like see how they uh, do things. So kind of like what are their practices and what are the good things that they're doing rather than uh, kind of like kicking off um, creating a new repository. Definitely. Um, does that make sense? Um, yeah, that's... Maybe should have like <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more. That's definitely why interoperable was put as a second, like advanced stage for the standard, because the first part was definitely findability and being able to actually recognize uh, that a hardware design is there for a crawler to be able to find that and then working on interoperability and how all the different platforms have all of their different ways and how well, one of the things we're going to be working on is reverse, yeah, reversing from a platform to the standard and the other way around. Um, yeah, to facilitate maybe, transition from one to the next. Yeah, maybe just a very quick uh, example to kind of like tie my thought is that, for example, if I share something on my Google Drive, it's not going to be shared in the same way than if I share something on a data repository, because data repositories will send this metadata that I create, dissertation met metadata, uh, my information and so on, they will send to a data site and they will uh, be uh, kind of accessed with this like uh, search engine crawlers. Whereas if I share my design on Google Drive or Dropbox, it's not going to be like very well documented. It's not going to be findable. So, and also I can, you know, I can, kind of lose my subscription to Dropbox and maybe this design will disappear. So the thing is that, um, yeah, we kind of want to, uh, to minimize the chance that something is going to be maybe lost forever. That, um, and even, even in that case, we want to keep the metadata, so the information that have existed. So that's why uh, I think choosing uh, a repository, a software repository or a data repository is much better than uh, choosing some like storage space. Uh, thank you.